Well, hello, friends. Tonight, we just want to welcome you to this platform as we have another Sunday night service. We trust tonight that you will receive the blessing that God intends you to receive. We welcome you, and we also encourage you to invite a friend to join as we'll share more of his word. In fact, tonight, the big question is, does God deserve of our praise tonight? And so I invite you to join me as we pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your love, for your mercy. Thank you for this world that you have created so that we can enjoy. We praise your name for all that you have done when we look around. Even today, you protected us and now we are here to listen to your word and we say thank you. We invite your presence to be here tonight as we go through your word that we'll be able to understand and our lives would be changed and be drawn to you. Thank you for answering our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And so, friend, before we go into the word tonight, we just want to ask you to sit back and enjoy the special music, and then we will go into the word. In my sin, I failed, Lord, then was afraid to try once more. The fire in my soul had a flame. That's when Jesus came and said, My spirit will give you the strength you need to raise you up and to succeed. And for me, through the night I'll give to you these words of life Fear not my child for I am with you all Pain and I see all, all of your tears. Ooh, oh, oh, fear not, my child. Oh, I'm gonna be with you always. I'm gonna walk with you. I'm gonna talk with you. And I know how to take care. What belongs to me? He said, my child, don't look behind this courage, man, is all you're gonna find. And don't watch the waves as they roll on the sea. Focus your eye on me. I will make you strong. And then your shattered courage, I'm gonna make. And if you fall, yes, if you fall, and it should get hurt, remember this eternal world. Be not my child, don't worry about me. Oh, I'm gonna be with you always. I'm 
gonna walk with you, I'm gonna talk with you. And I feel all of your pain, and I see all, all of your tears. Fear not my child, oh, I'm gonna be with you always. And I know how to take care of what belongs to me. I know how to take care of what belongs to me. Right, so, so welcome back again. Uh, tonight the big question is, what right does the God of the Bible have to claim that everyone should worship him exclusively? Does God have that right? The God of the Bible and the Christian claim that he is entitled to our worship and our devotion because he is the creator, God. What right does he have? Yes, friends, if he is what he claims, and he is the creator, then he does deserve our worship. I'm sure you would agree. When John, one of Christ's disciples, the writer of the, book, the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, was in vision on the Isle of Patmos. He was shown a sin in the heavenly throne room. Notice what the Bible say about this. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 4 and verse 10 and 11, the 24 elders fell down before him who sat on the throne and worshipped him who lived forever and ever and cast down their throne before, cast down their crown, in fact, before the throne. And what they were saying, they says that you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For you have created all things, and by your will they exist and are created. Uh, yes, friends, the Bible is saying that the four twenty-four elders, they are in the heavenly throne room, and they are worshiping God, and they are saying that you are worthy to receive honor and power. And the question is, why is he worthy to receive honor and power? They say, because you created everything, and by your will, they exist and are created. Oh, friends, the good news tonight is that God created this world. It did not just happen. Yes, friend, the elders before the throne of God are praising and worshiping him because he is the creator. This is the same reason why we should worship God, the God of heaven above tonight. Yes, friend, he is the one who made the world and all of us. But you might ask, what other evidence do we have that God is the creator? Yes, friends, God himself tell us that there is evidence all around us that he is our maker. When you look around and you see all the beauty and the wonder, you have to say that someone 
created and he is the one who claimed. In fact, in Romans chapter 1 and verse 20, it says that he, the, his eternal power and deity has been clearly perceived in the things that have been made, even his eternal power and Godhead. Yes, since creation, there has been evidence in all created things that God is the maker of all of these things. Just like the footprint on the sand, we know someone had been there even if we had never seen that person. And when you see all the things around you that had, they had to be created by someone, had to be. Those things are like footprint that tell you someone must exist who made all these things. Yes, friends, uh, God, the Father, as the Bible called him, was not alone in his work of creation. Uh, God, the Father, as we call him, and the Bible, was not alone in creation. In fact, in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26, uh, the Bible says in Genesis, and God said, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. The Gospel of John also developed this even more. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, the Bible says that in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's what the Bible is saying. He was in the beginning with God, and all things were made through him, and without him uh, nothing was made that was made. Yes, friends, uh, God was involved here and it's saying that the word, so who is the word? All things were made by him. And in John chapter 1, again, and verse 14, it says, And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Oh, friends, this description is referring to none other than Jesus Christ. So not only was God the Father involved in creation, but it's saying that Jesus, the flesh, he became flesh, the word became flesh, and dwell among us full of grace and glory, referring to Jesus Christ. It also did say, that the Spirit of God move upon the face of the deep. So that tell you that it, or not only God the Father was involved in creation. The Bible speaks of what we know as the Godhead. God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Godhead consists of three persons. All thinking alike, yet all separate. And so that's a mystery of the Godhead that sometimes we try to, to make everything about God in our understanding. And God said it's a mystery, the mystery of the Godhead. So it's not everything about it, but it tells you that there were three distinct individuals involved in creation. So sometimes we try to liken it and try to bring it to some understanding. But, but when you think of it, for example, you may have a company, and the company may have different partners in the company, but that's one company, one name is being carried. So this seems to be 
the concept here, but we need to accept it by faith as the Bible talk about the Godhead being involved in creation. Yes, Jesus cooperate with the Father to create everything. That's why Jesus says that, that if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. They operate as one. In Ephesians 3 and verse 9, it says of the mystery which from the beginning of the age has been hidden in God who created all things through Jesus Christ. Every good and perfect gift that man has ever had or will ever have came into being as the creator give the human race all of the blessings available. God made this creation for us. Not only did God make man in his image and give him a beautiful universe to live in, but he is also mindful of man's need. He's also mindful of man's need. And so it continues in Psalms 145, verse 15 and verse 16. It says that the eyes of all look expectantly to you, referring to God. You give them their food in due season. You open your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. So what we see here, not only is God the creator, but as it says that the eye of all look unto him expectantly, expecting something from God. In other words, it's saying that he is not only creator, but also sustainer. He provides your daily needs, my friend. He provides your daily needs. Yes, let's take a closer look at just a few of the ways that God cares for the needs of his creature. Consider the water you drink. It is as old. It is older than the pyramid, as old as the hills. The water, the water may be polluted by chemical or waste, but let the sun, the, the sun evaporate that water and lift it up into the atmosphere and thereby repurifying that water, repurifying water, and it become clean and usable again, and again distributed by the rain, by dew, or by snow. That's what he does. What a tremendous water system that God has designed. If the sun were a little bigger, or a little closer to earth, our ocean would boil away. If the sun were just a little smaller or a little further away, our atmosphere would freeze. Either way, life could not exist on earth. God has everything just the right place. They are controlled by him. But God not only create all things, he sustain all things. And the air we breathe is a gift of God. The Bible says in Job chapter 12 and verse 10, in those hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of all mankind. Same that the breath of every living thing is in the hands of God. Oh, friends, when you wake up this morning, you may have just wake up and went about your way and feel that it is the vitamins that you, you take that make you feel good. But I'm here to tell you, it is God who sustain and keep you. The very breath that you breathe belong to him. And so we are to worship God because everything, even the breath, belong to him. God designed the universe and he knew just the right formula 
for the air we breathe to sustain life and health on earth. He knew the right amount of nitrogen, oxygen, organ, and carbon dioxide to mix into the atmosphere. That certainly couldn't just happen. You know, some people will try to tell you that things just happen, but it's saying it didn't just happen. God made, he designed it, he made it, and it's been sustained by him. And there is no end of the wonder in, in, in nature, in our na um, natural world. No end to God's care for his creature. Think of the migration of the birds, one of the greatest puzzle of nature. How can a bird weigh in less than one ounce, navigate thousands of miles nonstop to a destination they have never seen? How could the fish find the stream where they, 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 their life began some 1,200 miles across on map ocean? How did they learn uh, to know when and where to go? Oh, friends, everything is in his hand. Yes, who taught the honey to make the honeycomb, which is such an engineering marvel, and with a brain no larger than a pen head. Who is the master mind behind it all? Job tells us in Job chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. It says, but now ask the beasts and they will teach you. Ask the beasts and they will teach you and the birds of the air and they will tell you. Oh, speak to the earth and it will teach you and the fish of the sea, and it will explain to you who among all those not know that the hand of the Lord has done this. Here's what the Bible is saying. As the birds, they will tell you. As the fish, they will tell you. As the earth, and it will show you his glory and his wonder in creation. Only human beings have a problem with being created by God. Uh, some claim that we just happen. Some claim that we fall down from something came from the water and, and, and creeping like a frog and then something happened billions of years and then you stand on your leg and, and, and it goes on. And that story just don't sound credible. Yes, God did it all. In fact, our duty and privilege to worship God is based on the fact that he is our creator and to him all things owe their existence. That's why you praise him. You give him thanks. Why? Because your very existence, you owe it to him. You cannot run away from that fact. Uh, Psalms 100 and verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and not we ourselves. Know that the Lord, he is God, and it is he who made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Yes, friend, God knows our need, and he has the power to supply those needs. Praise God. He knows our needs and he has the power to supply all our needs. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17, Jeremiah say, A sovereign Lord, you have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and outstretch and your outstretched arm Nothing is too hard for you, friend. Yes, friend. Doesn't it give you peace of mind to know that God can handle everything in the universe and in your personal life? 
Oh, friends, this is good news. No problem is too uh, small to bring to God for the God who owned the galaxy. Yes, friend, he knows everything. He even knows it all ahead of time. Not only God knows everything, but he knows everything ahead of time. It says here in Isaiah chapter 46 and verse 9, I am God and there is none like me. I am God and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done. Oh, friends, God says that he has the power to not only be present, but he says from declaring the end from the beginning. So God knows everything. That's why he has provided so that your security, he provided so that your daily living can be fixed because he knows everything. When you give him your life, he takes care of what you give to him. What peace and confidence we can have knowing that nothing can happen to us that is too hard for God to take care of. But best of all, friends, in First John chapter 4 and verse 8, the Bible says that God is love. Jesus said, the Father himself loves you. Does it surprise you? That the mighty God who created everything, such a colossal, complete universe, could be concerned about you? In fact, I'm here to tell you that the creation of the human race is the crowning act of creation. And so he cares about you personally. Uh, the Bible continues in Romans chapter 8 and verse 38 and 39, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angel nor principality nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other things in all creation shall be able to separate us from the love of God. Everlasting love. Yes, friends. The love that is found in Christ will never be separated from us. Yes, God loves us when we are lovable. He also loves us when we are unlovable. Do you realize that, friends? You love, he loves us whether we are black or white, male or female, beautiful or ugly, there is nobody else like that. But most important, he loves us forever. Uh, Jeremiah 31 verse 3 says, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Uh, David wrote, The Lord is good and his love endureth forever. And then continue in um, Psalms 100 and verse 5. God never give up on us. He is with us every moment we live and will never leave us. Yes, friend. And as if there still might be some doubt in our mind about his love, God explain it in such simple terms that we can easily understand in Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 and verse 16. Uh, the Bible says, can a man, for, a woman in fact, forget her nursing child and not have compassion on the son of a womb? Surely they may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Oh, friends, God say, he have inscribed you on the palm of his hands. In other words, there is no way he can go and you are not 
there. You are on the scribe. He inscribed you on the palm of his hands. That's how important you are to God. And so I tell you that he do care about you. God tried to demonstrate his love to man, but the, the message sent by the prophet and angel were not enough. Why? We didn't get the message. So God sent his son, Jesus, was the perfect revelation of the personality and the character of the Father God. In John chapter 14, verse 9, it says, He who has seen me has seen the Father. If we really want to know God, what God is like, and how he feels about us, we, we need to study the life of Jesus. He took our nature that we might reach, that he might reach our needs. Yes, he preached the good news of salvation to the poor. Yes, he fed the hungry. He ate with the people in their home. He forgave their sins and he gave them hope. That's who God is. Yes, friends, his face was first. His face was the first face many saw. That's when he healed them and he opened their eyes. And, and, and his voice was the first voice that some heard. That's when he able to, to cause the dumb to speak. He spread life, joy throughout the villages and the town. Wherever he walked, there was healing. This is real love found in Jesus Christ. That's why. In John chapter 3 and verse 16, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe should not perish, but have everlasting life. Oh, friends, what wonderful God. What wonderful news that we have that the God who, who created the universe, he cares about you personally. And so when man were condemned to die, because the Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God that is found in Jesus Christ is life. And so when we were condemned to die, Jesus came to save and to redeem us from sin. And so friends, as we go through our life, pray that we'll recommit our life to the God who create and sustain and, and die through his son Jesus to save us and is coming soon to receive us. And so I invite you to join me as we pray the prayer of recommitment and commit our life to the God who creates and sustains all things. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for creation, all the wonders and the beauty that you have created so that we can enjoy the food that you provided. You said that you will supply all our needs. And to this point, we can say, indeed, you are worthy of praise because you do supply our needs. And so we recommit our lives to you tonight and ask you to bless us in a mighty way. And may we never forget that you have inscribed our name on the palm of your hands, so that we'll always be with you. You'll always remember us. You'll never forget us. You said you'll never leave nor forsake us. And so help us to be mindful of that and keep our lives in step with yours. Bless us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.